Moving over now to our mailbag, my favorite segment. So we have uh, a take here from Gogsame, Gogcm. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I don't really know. Like it's always hard to do that. So um, he just says the Frio loss hurt. So I agree. Um, mm. Not even just from the fact that they lost, but the way that it ended. I think a lot of Frio fans are hurting at the moment. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, I don't like, you know, kind of breaking down games by slow-mo. It, mm-hmm. and, and yes, you know, it was touch. That's fine. AFL's admitted that. Uh, that happens. Like, it, would, it might have happened in the second quarter. No one picks up on it. Uh, might have happened in the third quarter as well. Uh, it was unfortunate timing. Um, but those mistakes certainly happen. Like I said, same, same with like MRO and tribunal stuff. I think slow-mo technology sometimes kind of um, can, yeah, just gives us a d- bit of a different lens. It makes us kind of break it down a, a lot slower. But it's such a hard game to officiate. Yeah. Um, so that was obviously disappointing. But I think... Um, and this is kind of the tone Justin Longmuir had post game as well. It was certainly a um, disappointing result, just given the position they were in. You know, a couple of minutes left in the game, uh, one and a half goals ahead or whatever it was, um, to concede that that Cottrell goal anyway. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was a Luke Jackson hit out that probably should have just gone straight down to sp- in, into the contest again and not slap back out into space. Um, probably cost them. You know, I think there was a Patrick Cripps handball that they really needed to lock in. Went to Zach Williams and he just was able to run. Uh, through a couple of Dockers players on the wing, kicked it long, and that was that Kerno mark. So, um, yeah, there were some moments there that the Dockers would have liked to have had back. So I think the disappointment, particularly probably from the club, is, isn't isn't on the on the um, the controversy at the end. Mm-hmm. Maybe how they lost the game in general and kind of allowing some of those late goals certainly yeah. would have added to it. Yeah, there's a thousand other moments in that game that yep. um, could have sealed it, but it is going to be a tough one for Laura Kane this week, I think, to uh, have to front the media on that one. So all the best to Laura. <laughs> Our final one is a question from Champ Edwards. What do the Crows need to do to win next week? They've got the Blues. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one thing you know about the Blues is they're going to be hard at the contest. Yep. And it's just an area that um, Adelaide has probably lacked a little bit. They've probably been a bit one pace though, and... and I guess the inside midfield battle is something that they could win. Yeah. Just like, and they just kind of have to watch what Freo did um, to get the game on their terms over the Blues. And um, it was certainly that certainly was the case in, on Saturday. Um, it was all going Freo's way. Um, they just couldn't quite hold on. So Adelaide probably yep. just need to study how that midfield battle is going to be won because like, they've got Crouch and Laird, uh, who certainly can work uh, through that midfield battle inside. It's just kind of that outside run as well. Like the Blues are, are turning really well to being a good inside and outside team. You know, the... Very strong at the contest. Obviously, we've got Patrick Cripps in there, but they, they're probably going to get Sam Walsh back this week. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be adding some outside run as well when you've got George Hewitt, um, Adam Scherer um, in that midfield mix as well. So that's going to be really tough, I think, for them and, and certainly where the game will be won and lost. Tex probably needs to find a bit of form. Yep. Um, you know, and it will probably come up against like a Jacob Wiedering, um, yep. which is which is going to be quite a, an interesting battle um, for them for the, for the evening. Um, but... This is going to be a tough one. Likely looking at an 0 and five start the Crows, but if they if they want to win it, it's going to have to be some guys like Rory Laird and Jordan Dawson stepping up in midfield, just like they did yep. last gather round. Um, it was absolutely fantastic performance. You know, one that really put them on the map um, as far as their you know their finals prospects. Obviously, didn't get there in the end, but that's why we were so um, I guess had so such high expectations of them heading into this season because we know what they can do. So it's been a frustrating start certainly for them. Um, but Jeff, Jake Sligo was great. I think he's going to yeah. be quite an important one. Just, yeah, I think it would be nice to see a bit of a midfield change as well. Like We were probably promised a bit more uh, midfield time for Rankin and Rochelle. Haven't quite got, gotten that. And they, they offer that flair. They offer that little bit of run. So that's certainly what could um, could help them as well against the Blues. So it's certainly going to be like cliche, but it's midfield's going to be where this, that game's won, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So shout out to DJ Rochelle. Hopefully he has a good one next week.